So one of the many things that uh, that ISO maps are useful for um, in a trading context is finding uh, the best hedges uh, for a given symbol. So uh, assume that we're we're interested in uh, in trading Apple, um, and we're interested in finding some hedges for it. Maybe we have a, a big position, um, or maybe uh, we we are uh, you know looking to do a, a pairs trading application. Um, but in any case, um, what what um, we can use the ISO maps uh, neighborhood uh, algorithm to find the the um, symbols that are closest to Apple, uh, and in this case, we, you know we see that spy, um, you know, kind of surprisingly high yield, um, you know, bonds and junk bonds um, are are you know high on the list, um, you know, as well as some tech, you know, more familiar tech names, um, and and so you know, let's just pick uh, the the you know top of the list, the closest symbol to Apple is uh, spy in this case, and so um, you know let, let's just let's just kind of verify. You know, it's always good to do sanity check uh, to see uh, you know that these these symbols are indeed related, and you know we can see a general uh, relationship here. You know, when spy uh, and Apple, uh, are, you know, they both tend to go up at the same time, they kind of tend to um, ebb you know down at the same time. Their flows, uh, in, you know, uh, peaks and valleys, you know, seem to coincide. So, so this seems like a good hedge uh, visually. So uh, let's actually calculate a, uh, a hedge ratio for it. And so, you know, one of the, the ways, kind of the simplistic ways to do it, is to use uh, ordinary least squared, um, you know, and to, to uh, you know, just estimate the hedge ratio and, and sort of uh, continue to trade. Um, well, the problem with that is that ordinary least squared um, will estimate the average hedge ratio over whatever time period that you're um, looking at it won't really take into account sort of the intricacies or any changes that um, you know may have occurred in the hedge ratio over time and so uh, how we combat that is with uh, sort of the gold standard uh, of, of online linear learning is the Kalman um, filter here and so what we're going to do is we're going to take Apple and Spy's price data and we're going to train this, uh, this this Kalman filter and then we're going to get uh, call it get state uh, function and so the get state function is going to return um, the, basically the the current um, state of the model and in this case Kalman filter is being applied to you know our familiar uh, OLS model our linear uh, you know pairs trading model and in this case we can see that the hedge ratio is is about 0 0.58 um, so so you know that that's a uh, that that that's pretty interesting uh, let's see what it you know looks like over time. Uh, we can call the get training data uh, function here, and then we can uh, we can plot uh, the, the the hedge ratio over time. As you can see, it's 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 increasing. Uh, now let's let's do a, a quick a quick again a sanity check uh, to make sure that this um, you know these parameters seem to make sense. Um, well, we can take a look at the tail of the price data. Um, you know, Apple's trading at um, 139 spot. Uh, you know, 34. Uh, Spy is trading at uh, 237 spot 71. We plug that into our model, and our outputs, uh, you know, we get something pretty close to Apple. Um, now, here's where this model becomes very powerful. Um, so unlike your static uh, OLS model, the Kalman OLS model uh, can update itself uh, over time as you uh, see, uh, you know, encounter new price information. So let's say that we, uh, you know, observe these two new prices, and we want to update our, our hedge ratio uh, in response to them. Uh, you can see we get uh, you know uh, uh, an update to our hedge ratio. It goes from 0.58 to 0.585, and so now we can plug that into our trading model and uh, and you know have our updated hedge ratio.